the enigma of the curious pin in the back of Amati and uh, Guarneri violins put about here and uh, there have been very uh, many uh, explanations and guesses what that could have accomplished uh, I have the fantastic book from uh, Birov here about the Guarneri violins and um, I read the explanation here and uh, well one of the great mysteries of the internal working of Del Jesu violin is a small conical wooden pin set into the middle area of the back between one and a half and two and a half millimeter in dia diameter. It's usually clearly visible on the inside of the plate except when hidden by studs, dirt or other obstructions. In most cases the pinhole was bored right through, through the back and because of its conical shape when it does emerge on the outside it does as a tiny pin prick. Often unnoticed among usual dents and scratches. And uh, there is also a um, suggestion on how this pinprick uh, came to be there. And uh, uh, what they um, suggest is uh, that uh, it was intended as a permanent marker for the dividers which were used to lay out the contours of the back thicknessing. Uh, I must say that uh, if that was really the purpose to make the back thicknessing uh, uh, circular around this pinprick, uh, Mr. Guarneri was a terrible maker because uh, he didn't really succeed in almost any uh, violin. If we look at these, I can take you a little bit closer. We look at the middle sections of the backs. Here it's okay, although it's far too uh, low down. The pinprick is about here, so uh, he wasn't successful. Here it's like this band over, same as here. Here you have the band on this, on the Chrysler. It's uh, nothing near a circle. We go on. Here he was pretty good, although that is also fallen down. The pinpricks should be here somewhere, but that's far too low down. It should, it's normally is here. And this is really off. This one is like a triangular. Uh, and uh, so on and so on. Here is, well, he could have been close. But if that was the case that he used this hole so many times that it finally drilled a hole through the whole plate. Uh, I must say, I wonder what he really was up to. Uh, so I don't believe that uh, explanation. There have been other explanations too. And uh, I do not uh, go into these. Uh, but I will cut right into uh, my personal view of this. Uh, of course, I ask myself, how can this uh, hole uh, correlate to my uh, my uh, uh, quest for listening? And uh, I think it is a amplifier. Um, it makes listening even 
easier. Uh, and before we drill our hole here, uh, I want to ask why the difference in, if we measure from the underside up to the hole, we find a discrepancy of the, uh, well, the closest to the under, uh, uh, under uh, edge is about uh, 182, and the farthest is 197, like on the Koshansky. So uh, there is a one and a half centimeter that is uh, uh, sort of going around here. And uh, since he used the same mold every time, I don't really understand how the different distances could appear. So uh, now we go right into listening. And uh, I have my tool here. It's uh, nothing but a point, pointed. And I put it here somewhere, put it there. And I listen when I do this. Can you hear it? Can you hear the difference in tone? And then I move it here. Now it's higher here. And if I move it here, now it's higher there. So of course, we <laughs> it would be interesting to find a spot where you have the same tone uh, in both ends. So I uh, cheated a little bit. So I found this spot here. Oh. It's about here. And um, putting the ruler down here, measuring, it ends up at uh, 180. Eight. No, 187 millimeters. And that's very normal position. Uh, you also saw that when I was trying to find the tone here, uh, it wobbles around very much. So I will go down, since I, I'm going to put a, a plug in this hole, I can make it as deep as I want to.